Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. And hello and welcome to another edition of Mets Musings, episode number 155. And let me hit that there. And uh, we are good to go with another edition of Mets Musings. We had a guest. I tried to get a guest lined up for tonight and never heard back. And I don't know what it is with these West Coast guys. But um, so it's just me tonight. No guest, but we do have, well, I guess you could call it a guest. We have a voicemail from uh, my former co-host, uh, Barry, and we're going to get to that right away because there's some things in there that uh, we like to address. But uh, just for a quick to-do, uh, Mr. Brewtown was on Monday night. We talked about the Brewers Mets series, and as it stands right now, it's one game apiece in that series. And as I record this on Thursday night, the Mets are playing the Brewers. It is the top of the third inning, and they are down one nothing on a home run by Aramis, Mar- Mar- Aramis Mar- Ramirez. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And um, John Nees, though, is pitching uh, very sharp tonight. Uh, just hit a batter, so there goes that that uh, idea, but uh, overall, he looks pretty good tonight. Uh, just made one bad pitch to Ramirez to uh, give up the home run. So, uh, without further ado, let's go right to the voicemail and get that on the air. And then uh, we'll be back in just a minute uh, and to answer the voicemail. Hey, Gary, it's Barry, your former partner, calling in first to thank you and the great Mike from San Fran for the birthday wishes and also to say how nice it was to hear the equally great Mr. Brewtown on episode 154. The three of you made me yearn for the old days when the four of us did our pre- and post-season predictions and when I was only celebrating my 29th birthday for the 29th time. However, Gary, I must take issue with some of what you said on 154, mainly that I take no blame whatsoever for the Mets' horrific signing of Chris Young. There was no reason to think that was a good acquisition, looking at the numbers he posted during his career, playing mostly in a band box in Arizona. My take on the move Sandy made was that the Mets targeted 2014 as the year they would really turn the corner and become a legit player of contenders, but the Matt Harvey injury totally blindsided them, and with no plan being in place, they all panic. You also wonder why they can't get out of their own way and always seem to not get the big hitter scoop on the bases, etc., and the answer is quite simple. They have an anemic offense, a below-average defense, especially with Ligaris out. And though the pitching is decent, overall they are just a bad team and have been a bad team basically since they moved to City Field in 2009. I also think that things will not change unless they do one or both of the following. Make drastic changes to the dimensions of City Field, especially in the power alleys, since the way the park is now, they will never be able to get a free agent power hitter to sign with them or trade one or more of their excess pitchers to acquire that power hitter. In this park, the Mets should be building the team around the pitching, defense, and speed, and especially when EY is out, there is no speed on this team. Right now, the Mets, if they are lucky, have at the most 10 players on their roster other teams would want, and two of those players, Wright and Murphy, have issues. Wright is clearly psyched out by City Field, while Murphy's defense has regressed this year. I wonder if the symposium he went to at the White House earlier this week was on new fathers suffering from male postpartum depression, since the time has said it clearly appears to be elsewhere. Also, there was a third choice as to whether you were a Davis or a Duda guy, and that third, and my choice, is neither. All this, and I have not even addressed the Mets' joke of an ownership, and there is not enough time to get into that now. And also, it has been said ad nauseum on many other Mets blogs, but I will cite an old proverb that says the fish stinks from the head down. For now, I will try to keep the faith as hard as it is, especially knowing who owns this team. Keep smiling and look towards better things ahead, though probably not until 2015 when hopefully Harvey is back, Thor is in the starting rotation, and the impressive-looking bullpen quartet of Familia, Mejia, Black, and Edgen have a little more experience. Thanks, Gary, for letting me have my turn to rant. And thank you, uh, uh, Barry, for uh, 
ranting. <laughs> but let me answer a few things there. I, I may have uh, not explained it properly when I said that the fans are partially to blame for the free agent signings. I didn't mean they were to blame specifically for Chris Young. What I meant to say is that through the media, sports talk radio, social media, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, whatever else is out there, comments on blogs, that they put pressure on these teams. And it's, it's no secret that most fans were screaming all winter to spend money to spend money. I do agree that the Harvey injury blindsided them. And I do believe, as you do, that they panicked and they made that signing of Chris Young. And I think partially uh, or, or in a great deal because of the outrage of the fans and the need to spend money because the fans want them to spend money. So it's, it's just from that angle that I think the fans need to take part of the responsibility too. And as I've said in the past, I've been through this many, many, many times. I can remember um, sitting in a ballpark and having guys behind me complain that uh, they never spend any money. And then that year they went out and spent money, got Benilla, got all of those guys that at one year when they spent all that money and the team stunk. And then the next year these same guys are saying, why don't they play the young guys? They never play the young guys. They spend money, get all these bum free agents. Well, you can't have it both ways. You have to build with youth. You have to fill in with free agents. Look at the Yankees. Everybody say they bought the pennant. You know, but think about it. Think about it. They had that core. They had Bernie Williams homegrown. They had Mariano Rivera. They had Derek Jeter. They had uh, Jorge Posada. They had, uh, I, I can't even remember now. And But they filled in with good not great players, not great players. Scott Brocious, Aaron Boone. Uh, I can't think of the other guy now that I wanted to get to. And they made some good trades and brought in some guys. Yes, they brought in some pitches that they purchased. But that's when they were winning. And, and when they continued to win but didn't make the playoffs or lost in the playoffs was when they started bringing in all-stars at every position and spending big money. Giambi here, A-Rod. That's when they got themselves in trouble. And they the core got old, and this is the situation they're in now. They spent a lot of money this winter, and they're still basically a, a cut above a 500 team. So I'm just saying spending money isn't always the answer, but I think that's what it wasn't the ultimate decision but it helped push them in that direction, and that's that's what I meant to say. As far as the signing of Chris Young, I really think that was done uh, with this sabermetric stuff, and, and they saw something in that. And, uh, again, I, I don't believe in sabermetrics. I'm sure there's some value there. But uh, I think you can go too overboard, and the numbers can tell you things that really aren't there. All you have to look at is the way this guy played, the way he hit, and there's no redeeming value to it. And he's continuing to do it again. In fact, you can take this one step further. And did you notice how, uh, uh, well, let's not even go there in this issue with the Ike Davis, Lucas Duda thing. Because uh, uh, for those who care, Ike Davis is in a big slump and isn't hitting again. And they're starting to get hit on him in the Pittsburgh press uh core is getting on Ike Davis now and he's losing playing time to Gabe Sanchez so uh, we won't even get into that in this episode but what I was trying to say is that everybody deserves responsibility that if the fans are gonna yell and scream about spending money and they spend money on the wrong player then you have to you have to look yourself in the mirror and say well you know I want them to spend money I, I, I can't complain about it I don't know, still don't know if I'm explaining it properly, but that's the way I feel. It's my opinion, and uh, we're going to move on from there 
to one of our first stories, and that is that as of this past Tuesday, David Wright leads all National League third baseman in All-Star game voting the MLB announced on Monday evening. Wright has amassed 859,082 votes, nearly 100,000 votes more than the Rockies' Nolan Arenado at third base. So David Wright in first place in the voting for uh, All-Star, third baseman, and um, uh, that's a great thing. Let's, let's get David. I know he's struggling a little bit now, but we want David. We want Mets on the, on the All Star team. I wish that Ligaris wasn't hurt, so we could make more of an effort to get him on there. And uh, but we'll see how that all shakes out. But uh, David Wright leaving the third baseman, and on the off day on Monday, Mister Murphy, Daniel Murphy went to Washington as he spent the off day speaking at the Working Families Summit at the White House. Murphy was put on paternity leave and missed opening day so he could be with his wife for the birth of his son. His decision got national attention after being ridiculed by two local talk radio hosts, which naturally turned into a week-long debate among fans when fueled by other media. When Noah asks me one day what happened, what was it like when I was born... Murphy was saying, I could have answered, well, Steven Strasburg hung me a breaking ball that day, son, and I slammed it into the right field corner. But I think it's going to go so much further in that I'm the one who cut his umbilical cord, and long after they tell me that I'm not good enough to play professional baseball anymore, I'll be a father and I'll be a husband. So that was the reason on the front end that I wanted to be there for my wife and my son. Well, Three cheers to Daniel Murphy. I mean, uh, it, this is a new phenomenon with guys taking off the birth of their son, uh, the children. They didn't do that years and years ago. But uh, good for him for uh, standing up to the talk show host and doing what he did, thought was right. Okay, I mean, we got a bunch of news stuff here, so we're going to get through it. Um, <laughs> it's a combination of news and injury reports. It always seems to be that way. Uh, Dylan G, currently on a disabled list with a strained lat, may be on track to return to the Mets on July 1st. That remains to be seen, and uh, I'm sure my uh, uh, former partner, Barry, will have something to say about that. He thought that, we, that Dylan G feels that Dylan G will be out the rest of the season. We'll see. They're saying July 1st. Uh, and as a formality, the Mets placed Triple A right-handed pitcher Noel Syndergaard on the seven-day disabled list. Uh, retroactive to June 9th, Syndergaard, dealing with a sprained AC joint in his left non-throwing shoulder, is eligible to return on June 16th. Good news. Jeremy Hefner threw 15 pitches off a mound in Port St. Lucie on Tuesday. It was his first time on a mound since having Tommy John surgery last October. Hefner said he was throwing at 75% effort, and it was easier than throwing on flat ground. Well, that's good news. Hefner coming along in his uh, Tommy John surgery rehab. And uh, on the other flip side... The Mets want Matt Harvey to wait at least 11 months after his Tommy John surgery before he pitches in a game for the Mets, which is standard protocol and a doctor-recommended time frame. Sandy Ann Alderson told reporters on Tuesday at City Field, Harvey had his surgery on October 22nd, 2014, which leaves only the final week of September for him to pitch in a regular season big league game. Harvey said he wants to go into the offseason no, knowing He's capable of pitching in a game. The organizational's instructional league runs September into October, so there may be a chance for him to throw there. Harvey said he was caught off guard when the team stopped him Monday from throwing off the lope of a man. And I think the team is making the right decision here. They need to slow him down. Hefner had his surgery in August. He is on target Harvey waited longer, had his in October. So let's get him healed so he's not going through it again. Uh, the news is that Adam Wainwright may be going for a second one. Uh, don't know what that what came out of that uh, thing uh, today, but uh, 
he may have to go for another one. So don't rush it, Matt. Let's let's make sure that it's healed. When the doctors say there's no guarantee that he that it can't tear again, but at least let's do the best we can in getting that healed and getting in shape and getting back hopefully healthy for 2015. That's the main concern. Okay, so let's see. The Mets have made a move following the win on Monday night. They sent Scott Rice down to AAA Las Vegas and activated righty reliever Gonzalez Herman off the disabled list. So a fresh arm in the bullpen and a righty replacing a lefty, which leaves Dana Evelyn and Josh Edgen as the lefties in the Mets bullpen. Uh, let's see what else is new here. Why don't we take a quick break and we'll come back with uh, some more news and notes and uh, a farm report and we'll call it an evening. So uh, we'll be back after this message. Mets Musings is an unofficial independent podcast covering New York's National League baseball team. It is not affiliated in any way with Major League Baseball or the New York Mets. Hi, this is Gary Mack of Mets Musing, and I've got some big news for you. We're moving, yes, not only Mets Musing, but the entire BaseballPodcast.net family is moving to BaseballTalkRadio.com. So come and check us out. At BaseballTalkRadio.com. All the great shows that you're listening and enjoyed on BaseballPodcast.net are now available at BaseballTalkRadio.com, the home of great baseball talk shows. Looking for great Cardinals talk? Then check out Conversations with C70. My name is Daniel Shoftaw, and I talk with some of the great bloggers on the Internet today about their teams. But it always goes back to the Cardinals. Find the latest episode on my website, www.cardinal70.com or at baseballpodcast.net. Five one six six one nine six three four one. That is the voicemail comment hotline where you can leave a voicemail like Barry did and be a part of the show. Or like our friend Ernst or our friend Sean from the UK does uh, every once in a while. Hello, Sean. Just a shout out there to Sean. <laughs> and don't forget, if you uh, like to uh, send an email, you can. It's metsmusings at gmail.com. And by the way, there is another way to uh, send a voicemail. You can go to the site, metsmusings.com, and there's a big uh, big sign or a banner there that uh, directs you how to send a voicemail right through the website there. So uh, check that out, if you will. And the Twitter group I'd like you to follow me on is at metsmusings one and the other group, the Facebook group, is Mets Musing. So go check us out there. And in other news, Adam Rubin of ESPN reports that sources told him that Zach Lutz is headed to Japan to play for the Rakuten Eagles. Lutz was hitting 291 with seven homers and 37 RBIs. With Vegas this season, he appeared in 22 games for the Mets in 2012 and 13, producing a combined 226 average and two RBIs in 31 at bats. And uh, here's some good news on the injury front, and that is that Eric Young Jr. played left field and went one for four with a walk in a rehab game in a single A St. Lucie today. So uh, he is on the mend, and uh, on the flip side of that is that Curtis Grandison is not in the lineup tonight, 
and he has a problem with a calf strain. That's what they're calling it, and it's day to day. And he figured he did not want to take a chance with that, and uh, decided to sit out today. And I think it's a very smart move by uh, uh, Mr. Grandison to do that. And uh, let's get him healthy. And Andrew Brown is in the game to replace him. Uh, Juan Lagares has not started really doing anything yet and uh he is going to be a while yet i would imagine and we really would like to get juan back in the lineup because uh he's a big help and we really miss his defense out in uh center field and uh, in another uh, story uh in an interview k-rod said that uh, he would never rule out coming back to pitch for the Mets someday. Of course, the Mets would want, have to want him. Uh, you know, I don't know. He's he's having a great, terrific year, and I think it would be uh, interesting to see if the Mets decided to bring him back. They tried to bring him back over the winter, but the uh, Brewers topped their salary offer. So he went to sign with the Brewers, one-year contract, and he has 19 saves and a 2.08 ERA in 30 appearances with the Brewers this season. So K-Rod, not, um, not beyond coming back to the Mets. And apparently the Mets have tied the ball game at 1-1. So we are on a Bobby Abreu uh, hit. So they are tied in the fourth at 1-1. One, one. And all right, uh, we are going to take another quick break and be back with the uh, farm report. You know, it's getting exciting around here because uh, – the Cyclones start their season tomorrow evening at those Staten Island Yankees, and it's going to be ex nothing like single-A short season uh, exciting baseball in Brooklyn. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But uh, let's take a break and be back after this. Hi, this is the world-famous Mr. Brewtown of BrewtownSports.Potomatic.com. You know, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. Uh, Brewtown Sports, you can also listen to the show at Stitcher.com, TuneIn.com, and iTunes.com. And we've got the new one. It's called BrewtownRadio.Webley.com. But the one that I'm most proud of being on is BaseballPodcast.net. It is the home of great baseball talk shows. Check it out, my show and all kinds of other programs all about Major League Baseball. So check it out. That's BaseballPodcast.net, the home for great baseball talk shows. Are you a fan of the NBA and Major League Baseball? Would you like a sports show dedicated primarily to just that? Plus, we throw in a little fantasy baseball and basketball just for good measure. Featuring credentialed sports journalists, the guys who sit on press row, we bring you the stories that you want to hear. To check us out, please visit us at philnasons.com or on Twitter at FlashTennis31. For all the listeners of Mets Musings, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 14-day trial to give you a chance to check out their service. Over 75,000 titles to choose from in all different categories, including science fiction, mysteries, biographies, sports, computers, you name it, they have it to download. To download your free audiobook today, go to audiblepodcast.com slash metsmusings. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash metsmusings for your free audiobook. Five one six six one nine six three four one voicemail comment hotline. If you'd like to be uh, on the show, leave a voicemail on that number. Uh, you can also go to the website, mitsmusings.com. There's a 
big banner right in the middle of the page there that will also help you to leave a uh, voicemail right through that website. Or you can do the old-fashioned thing and send us an email at metsmusings at gmail.com. And don't forget, again, follow me on Twitter, Mets Musings one Facebook group is Mets Musings. So check us out at all that location. All right, and in the farm report, somehow I think I should need a uh, uh, some kind of sound effect for that uh, when I do the farm, <laughs> the farm report. But uh, here we go again. Uh, AAA Las Vegas right-handed pitcher Jeff Walters has a torn UCL in his right elbow and is likely headed for Tommy John surgery. So another uh, another person, another pitcher going uh, down to this dreaded Tommy John surgery and this is just it's become an epidemic this year folks just just epidemic proportions these guys going down with this Tommy John torn UCL I should say and requiring Tommy John surgery and look who showed up at Port St. Lucie finally Mets left-handed pitcher John Lannon has finally reported there to Port St. Lucie Florida he accepted a minor league assignment rather than become a free agent on April 19th he took the time between then and now to attend to a family matter. He had a 15 and a quarter ERA in five relief appearances for the Mets this season. And not all bad news. There's some good news as uh, Mets right-handed pitcher prospect Gabriel Yanoa was named pitcher of the week for the Florida State League. After throwing seven shutout innings and striking out 11 batters against Dunedin this past week. So congratulations to Gabriel Yanoa having a, a, a pretty decent season down there in Savannah. And, uh, can, and or, yeah, and uh, so congratulations for being named the Pitcher of the Week. And one sad note, uh before we go, well, let's get that into a, uh, in a minute. Uh, let's go back to the farm report. And as I said before the break, the Brooklyn Cyclones are opening up uh, Friday night, tomorrow night, in Staten Island against the Staten Island Yankees. And then they come home Saturday to play the same Yankees at MCU Park. It'll be their home opener. Uh, it's going to be a hot, great weekend for Cyclones baseball and uh, and now they start. Now it starts single A New York Penn League short season. And don't forget the All Star Game is at MCU Park this summer in August, and they're going to have a lot of great promotions. July fifth is uh, Keith Hernandez bobblehead night. The uh, Magic Lugie at, is the Seinfeld. Night they are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the first episode of the Seinfeld show, and uh, they have all kinds of things in relation to uh, Jerry Seinfeld and the show. Uh, so big season coming up for the Cyclones, and be looking out for something special when it comes to the Cyclones. We'll tell you about it soon. And they do have now on YouTube Cyclones TV. Very interesting. Check it out. Inside view of the team. Uh, and uh, so go to YouTube and check that out. And as I just said, on a sad note, Bob Welch, a former Cy Young Award winner and the last major league pitcher to win at least 25 games in the season, has died at the age of 57, the Oakland Athletics said Tuesday. Welch, a two-time All-Star who posted a 27-6 record as the Cy Young Award winner on the Athletics 1990 American League Championship team, died in Seal Beach, California on Monday night. Cause of death was unavailable. Uh Shame, such a young man, and uh, he did have some issues with alcohol uh, during his career, but really burst onto the scene in the 78 World Series. Um, had a great year, was Rookie of the Year, I believe, there, and uh, just went on to have a very nice career. And as I said, the last man to win at least 25 games in a season. And so Bob Welch, former Cy Young Award winner, dead at the age of 57. And uh, 
that's about going to be the show tonight. Uh, the Mets uh, have some of their draft picks they've signed and uh, have assigned them to Brooklyn and to uh, other teams, Gulf Coast, of course. And the parent team, the Mets, uh, still in the fifth. They're 1-1, two outs in the top of the fifth with the Milwaukee Brewers. Let's hope we can score some runs and get a victory and take a series from from those Milwaukee Brewers. San Diego Padres come in for a big weekend series against the uh, the New York Mets. And then the Mets hit the road again as they go to St. Louis for three and four to Miami. So that's the upcoming week in Mets baseball. And let's hope that uh, we can turn it around and get something going here and get a streak going. Until then, and until we meet again, remember, keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets.